I'm back again, you know already. It's Ryan Anderson back with another Ryan's Sports Reviews. Tonight I am reviewing the Toronto Raptors versus San Antonio Spurs game that was played at the Air Canada Center. I'm not calling it Scotiabank, come on. So, first, the response to DeMar DeRozan's return, I, I loved it. It was heartwarming. It was heartwarming. He was the first Raptors legend who got cheered on his return to Toronto. I love it. Because Vince didn't get cheered, and you know the situation with that. Cried his way out of town, faked an injury, got traded. Tracy McGrady screwed us over in free agency. At least I think he did. Chris Bosh, big three. Point being is, is there are a lot of players on the Toronto Raptors who have come back and been booed or been ambivalent to because they weren't a big enough star or they did something really horrible. But DeMar DeRozan got screwed over by the team, by the club. So, of course, we all welcome him back in open arms. Happy to see him back, hope, hoping he did well, but still lost because, yeah. And DeMar had a... I love the reception they gave him. He deserved it wholeheartedly, and he played a good game. People got what they were asking for. Now, first off in the game, the Raptors start off firing on all cylinders, doing well, but then by the end of the first quarter, the Spurs start to catch up because the Raptors bench tonight was just trash. The bench played like trash, and Kawhi not playing that well also didn't help. Both groups not playing well almost nearly cost us this game. The bench had, like, got outscored by the Spurs bench by, like, 35 at least. I'm not looking up the numbers, but I think it was like 70-something to 55. Probably ended up to be more, but about 30 points they got outscored by. About 25, 30 points the bench, our Raptors bench, got outscored by the Spurs bench. Why would you allow that? That's my question. Why are you not firing on the same cylinders as the starters are? Now, I know that's probably what makes you bench players, but Jeremy Lin, veteran, knows how to fire like a starter because Lin Sanity, Mark Gasol, good center, not as good as JV, but I'm starting to warm up to him. Gasol, not that good. I mean, he was good. He did what he needed to do, but he didn't start off that well, but I guess it's better than Moose Monroe, even though I love the guy. Moose Monroe was a good player. He, I loved the energy that he brought to the club. And normally, whenever I watched a game, he played well for some reason. At least what I would call well for a backup center. But a third backup center, because he was a third center. Now we don't even have... We only have two. Unless you want to throw Siakam up there if you're playing small ball, but... Are you really going to do that? Siakam's not really a stretch four. Why does it always come down to the stretch four criticism with this club? I swear. Because 2016, we need a stretch four. 2017, we need a stretch four. Try to get one. Don't work. 2017, we need a stretch four. 2018, we need a stretch four. 2019, we need a stretch four. It makes me want to rip out my hair. It makes me want to rip out my hair. It really does. I mean, it really does. Because Siakam's a good four. But because he doesn't go to center enough, you're like, nope. We need a stretch four, which I guess is what Abaka is, but he's been playing more center ever since Siakam came up. So let's be honest, we really don't have that stretch four, but the team is good without it. So, I mean, back in the day when you were complaining about it more, of course, they weren't good with it. But, you know, reasons. Um, Patrick McCaw, third point guard. Eh, Norman's more of a shooting guard. Didn't really do... He did okay, didn't do well. Norman Powell, he's lost it ever since he got that contract after he got injured. I mean, dude's just not good anymore. The thing about the Raptors bench, that sc it scares me. We aren't as deep as we were because all of our really good players on the bench, we sent away because we needed Gasol. But really, we didn't need that. We could have kept Valanchunas. 
we could have kept Delon. We kind of wasted that, honestly. I don't know why we did that way, but hey, who knows? I mean, I mean, I like Gasol, but I don't think he's as good as Jonas. But I don't know what made them choose to trade Jonas. I'm not in the brain trust, so that's not me. But why? Gasol is good, but he's no Jonas. That would be more like an Ibaka replacement. But yeah. Um, I haven't done these in a couple of weeks, so I'm kind of catching, catching up with the news. Jeremy Lin did really well. He was probably the best bench player because Jeremy Lin is doing really well for the Toronto Raptors. Um, I like watching Jeremy Lin play. And fun fact, I called this first. Why? Because in my franchise mode in NBA Live 15, yes, I used to play NBA Live before I played Got 2K. Shut up. I got Jeremy Lin in the first free agency period of that part, of that game, in the free agency, in franchise mode. So I called it. I always wanted Jeremy Lin in Toronto, so hey, I called it. But, so uh, something good happened. Something happens that I wanted to see. Um, second quarter, the Raptors and the Spurs, and the third quarter, they just go blow for blow, you know? Even the fourth quarter, but the Raptors started to pull away, then they gave it up, and then they came back. Raptors, Kyle, Kyle Lowry was the player of the game. Pascal did well, OG did well, Ibaka did good enough. Kawhi was just off tonight until like the fourth quarter, but I guess he was being clutch when it mattered, unlike DeRozan, and you'll see some of that symbolism as the game goes on. But the way that Kawhi just was, I don't know if Kawhi still hurt and he was playing a little bit injured or... I don't know what it was. I mean, if he was still injured, you'd think they'd tell him, oh, hey, you're not playing because Uncle Dennis said so. But, hey, I don't know. Um, also, the Raptors played well. And also, a very good play was when Jeremy Lin had that back pass. Like, he just hit it with, like, passed it with the back of his hand right to Ibaka, drained the three. And I'm like, that's probably where we win this game. And then the Spurs came back. And let me tell you something about the Spurs. They have some good, underrated players. I mean, DeRozan's a good player, of course, but they have some good, underrated players. Of course, Pirtle is good because we know about Pirtle. Um, Bertans, Bertan, Bertans is a good player. He killed us both times they played. They played this year. Bertans, I enjoyed watch. I enjoy watching him play. He's a good center, a good powerful. You want a good stretch four? There you go. There's a good stretch four for you, Bertans. Um, Bryn Forbes, he's pretty good. LaMarcus Aldridge, of course, is one of their stars. It's him, Rudy Gay, and DeRozan, but we knew that. Bryn Forbes is pretty good. White is pretty good. I mean, the Spurs got some good players. They got some good players that you ain't really think of when you say the word good players. Spurs fans, if I were you... You're going to hold on to that playoff spot, so don't worry. You'll be in the playoffs. You may not make it far, but you're going to be in the playoffs. Trust me, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. That's Spurs fans if I were you. Now, the end of the game. The part that everybody wants to talk about. DeRozan gets stripped by Lowry and Kawhi. Leonard picks it up. Puts in a basket that wins the game. Lay up because DeRozan coughed up the ball. I said you were going to see symbolism of why DeMar got traded here. Guess what? We just did. DeMar choked and Kawhi didn't. DeMar had a good game, but he still choked at the end. Big situations. That's why I got traded. Kawhi may not have been good the whole game, but in a clutch situation, he clamped down with the clamp. Nah, that's OG. The claw. And did what he had to do. Then, then Kyle Lowry gets the rebound. Sort, like, one foot inbounds, one foot out of bounds, but he wasn't really out of bounds. Took some, th like, a lifetime to review because... We want to make sure he wasn't out of bounds. And even if he even if he was, it was just one foot. That doesn't count. 
He caught the ball with his hand in bounds, and one of his feet was in bounds. It was in bounds. There was no question to it. They were just milking the game because, I guess, the entertainment value in the NBA. I mean, every time I watch something, it's like, oh, CONCACAF refs are trash. Oh, NFL refs are, tr NFL refs are trash. SEC refs, refs are trash. NBA refs are trash. NHL refs are trash. Every game I watch, it's like, oh, that's why this group is worse than these groups. You can't win with referees. WWE referees are better than any other real sports referees. And I'm being honest. Well, unless you're the special guest referee, then technically you won't be, but... Yeah, and then... Raptors get the ball back. Throw it in midcourt. Kawhi gets pushed back, throws it in. I mean, that was a backcourt violation. That was a backcourt violation. I don't care what you think. Raptors won. Yes. Am I a Raptors fan? Yes. But looking at that objectively, looking that up objectively, what Kawhi did was a backcourt. It was a backcourt. And they didn't call it. So he gets fouled. Gets the free throw, puts it in. They have 0.2 seconds left. They take a timeout, try to do something, but they couldn't get it done. Raptors win. And that was probably the... The ending killed that game for me. They played well. It was a good game until the ending because BS. NF, uh, N, NBA ref BS. I mean, come on. Come on. Come on. That's not what you want to see. It's not what you want to see. Player of the game for me was Kyle Lowry. Kyle Lowry took this team by the, dragged this team by the balls when Kawhi wasn't doing anything. He put us in the position to have this win. So good on Kyle. And now I have something I want to talk about that if you're coming here from watching that Raptors fan TV live stream that I was on, or if you haven't watched it but want to, or I think it's on replay, or just what I was talking about on the Raptors Fan TV live stream. We were talking about what should happen to Masai if Kawhi doesn't re-sign. And I'm like, because he was, he was like, Moya, the host name. He was like, Kawhi, it's Masai's fault that if Kawhi, because he made a deal if Masai leave, if Kawhi leaves, Masai should be fired. And I'm like, no. I don't agree with that. I, res I, I respect the opinion. I don't agree with it. Here's why. Here's why. Kawhi Leonard, that deal was good. If any GM had that deal, I don't care if you're Daniel, Daryl Morey, and I don't care who you are. Brian Colangelo, he would even be smart enough to take that deal. Any GM would take that Kawhi deal and then worry about the next year later. We had a plan. It was get Kawhi, and if he doesn't stay, it's a we're gonna blow Raptors are gonna blow it up. If he stays, we'll work with it. I don't know what Masai has up his sleeve, but I do know he has a plan for the rebuild if it happens. And if he, if Kawhi stays, we have a plan then. We have two different diverging plans. If one or the other doesn't happen, Masai Ujiri should not be fired because of Kawhi leaving. That's stupid. I mean, that's one of the stupidest things I've ever thought of. Like, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And I'm not trying to grill anybody. I'm just trying to explain. It doesn't make any sense to me. Now, if you're watching this on Reddit and want to put a comment there or put it on YouTube or put it on my Twitter or whatever, I don't care. I'll respond. But or if you want to leave me an angry DM somewhere, I don't care. I'll respond. But the point is, is Masai Ujiri has a plan. If Kawhi leaves or stays, the rebuild will be better if we keep Masai. Masai should not be fired if Kawhi leaves. It's not his fault. You can't control a player after they become a free agent. The player will sign wherever they want to sign. If Kawhi wants to go to the Clippers and have no chance at winning, he chooses that. If he wants to go to the Lakers and be LeBron's boy toy, side boy, you could do that as well.
It's his choice. If he wants to stay in Toronto, stay in the cold and win, that's his choice. It's not Masai's fault he doesn't make the right, the right choice. That's all it is. So, don't hold Masai. I know MLSE will probably hold him up to that side. Like, oh, you didn't keep Kawhi. We're going to give you the sack. We're going to fire you. Because you didn't do what you needed. And we'll hire somebody who's inept. That's what I'm afraid of. Rational thinking is Masai made the best deal for this team right now. He made what he had to make. Don't fire him because of it backfires in free agency. Any GM would have made that deal. I don't think there's any GM stupid enough not to take the deal. Then again, Brian Colangelo may be that stupid. I don't know. I don't think so. But then again, the Sixers didn't get Kawhi, so I guess he didn't take that deal so yeah maybe brian colangelo is stupider than we thought yeah but Masai's a trailblazer i'll believe in him during a rebuild if we lose Kawhi, if we keep him well i still believe him because we're gonna win that's fine i'm fine with a bosch era style rebuild if Kawhi leaves and Masai shouldn't be fired because of that so raptors win I had a little bit of controversy into this. Not that I meant to, but I mean, we talked about it. I talked about it on something else. So I'm going to talk about it here, just like Steve Dangle talked about some on Dangle Podcast or Hockey or Ice Surfing or Hockey Central. He talked about it on his LFR, the next one. So I did the same thing. Oh, by the way, by the way, I forgot to, speaking of Steve Dangle, I forgot to say this. Or I don't know why I'm saying this, but I'll say it anyway. If Toronto FC wins the second leg against Independiente and gets through to the second round of the CONCACAF Champions League, I said I would embarrass myself live on camera. The game is next week. I, if Toronto pulls this off, I was thinking about eating a whole raw bell pepper. But if you're in the comments and you have a better idea, send them to me. And by Monday afternoon or Tuesday morning, I will make a decision on what I should do in front of camera to humiliate myself. I just want to see if bell peppers are actually that bad. Yeah. But if the TFC does make it through and make that comeback against Independiente, I will embarrass myself live on camera in a separate video from the RSR for that game. Either eating a bell pepper or whatever you guys come up with. And then again, that's probably a bad idea because the last time I did something like that on Twitter, Montreal fans hacked it, or not hacked it, but came, slid it, put a Montreal logo on my comments and gave it 20 likes and nobody else commented anything. So that made, was my DP for a week after we lost the last 401 Derby last season. I should have never done that. But whatever. If you enjoyed this video, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, tell all your friends. Subscribe, like, comment if you disagreed with anything. Share it. And let's hope the Raptors get the number one seed and keep Kawhi Leonard. I'll be back again soon. You know I'm out. Peace.